All right, what's up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Trice Too Easy. We're going to go ahead and get into the NBA slate today on this lovely Saturday. We'll look at the data, the charts, the matchups, the trends, the discrepancies, the mismatches. Hopefully find an edge. Hopefully crack these folks. Guys, if you would like to join my sports community and Discord server, it's in the pinned comment and in the description of all my videos. 10 measly bucks a month. It's a fun community. We share slips. We talk sports. We have fun. It's just a community of dope people. We'd love to have you. And if you like exclusive access to viewer perks and tools I use daily, like Smart Stake, like Outlier, along with sports books I've partnered with to get my community deposit bonuses and things of that nature, they're in the pinned comment and in the description of the video as well. Okay, guys, let's get right into it. Full show. We'll review yesterday. Bad beat, big winner, player props. Look at where the smart money's putting their uh, dollars at with the uh, smart stake sharp money tool. Then we will review the slate, go over each game, dissect them, and hopefully crack these folks. To review yesterday, one of the worst NBA days I've had in a very long time. I had 3.5 losses. Uh, so I go four wins, seven losses. Three of the losses were 0.5, like literally lost by 0.5 like the lakers I had the minus 10 and a half they lost by 10 the bucks i think i had them plus eight and a half they lost by eight or some some shit along those lines. i don't know what it was my graphics are always wrong point is i had 3.5s it could have easily been a seven and four day didn't go our way it's kind of been the uh kind of been the gist of it the last few days um Still been a great season, still murdering NBA, but a, a rough maybe week, maybe like five days, just either like going one game positive, breaking even, and then now this. So just haven't really had a big, big day. I'm due. I'm about eight months pregnant. I'm getting about to get the epidural. I'm so due, bitch. Anyways, let's go ahead and look at a bad beat from yesterday. So this bad beat, uh, it was posted by, who posted it because it was massive? It was posted by Riff Drummer. He's won before. This is posted by Riff Drum Drummer. Now, you might see this and be like, why is this a bad beat? It was a fucking 42-leg Mega Giga Lotto ticket. 42 legs. The only thing that missed was Cat for 15 points. He got 14. And he got 14. He missed a free throw with like one minute left in the game. It would have cashed. He missed a free throw with like one minute left. It is so... Brutal. That is so disgusting. That is like that is just disgusting to lose that 42 legger by Cat missing a last minute free throw. That's one of them you throw up. Uh brutal. Brutal. Sorry about your loss. As far as the big winner, big winner was posted by somebody new I've never seen in the Discord before. Never seen typing. His name is La Balaberto. <laughs> La Balaberto 09. Three dollars in the 250. Got Damn, good ticket, baby. Uh, that that's that's a damn good bet. Congratulations, Luca over Mavs, Lakers, Suns, Spurs, Grizzlies. Uh, that Grizzlies is what really took him over the edge. Great fade of the Clippers, man. Really great job. You know Tyron Lewis gambling. As soon as you saw them go up about twenty in the second or third, you should have known. Nuke them. You already know what it is. Uh, congratulations. Very nice read and good slip. Uh, enjoy the money. Double it again today. Okay. A couple props I'm eyeballing heavily. I think you guys might want to take a look at. First one, Nick Richards under eight and a half boards. Guys, do me a favor and just throw it on a parlay. It's a free leg. It's free. He is not coming near nine boards. I'm sorry. He's just not. He's just not. Uh, the guy doesn't get no boards. He doesn't get no bunions. Uh, I would look at his under eight and a half extremely. Next, Kobe White. Over 30 and a half PRA. The guy's balling. The guy is hooping. Head to head. Also versus the Pacers. My good fucking God. He smoked this line a lot. Three out of four times. 40 the last time he saw him. 34 the last time he saw him before that. Both this year, by the way. And March 2nd and March 10th. I love his spot. I love his over 30 and a half PRA. Now, smart stake. Let's go ahead and look at where the sharp money is putting uh, their bucks today. These are the big dogs. Those who are banned from rec books have to bet on exchanges. This is the props that they're eyeballing. They were hot. Then they went ice cold. They're starting to get hot again. So if you want to tell them, it might be a good time. First one, Draymond Green under six and a half boards, $3,500 of liquidity at plus money. Probably a good bet. Draymond's a jackass. Next, Emmanuel Quickie, over 23.5 points and assists. $3,000 monstrous nuke on him. Next, Kel L. Ware, under 10.5 boards. The Sharps love to fade Kel L. Ware, and it almost always cashes. <laughs> if you're going to pick one, probably want to go with that. Next, Kevin Herter, over 2.5 boards. 2,000 of liquidity on there. Not bad. Probably worth a look. 
and then he only needs three boards. And lastly, Igor Dimon over three and a half boards, 1.8K of liquidity. Not bad at all. I like that spot also. Okay, guys, um, let's go ahead. Enough of the fun stuff. Enough of the small talk, the chit chat, the chatter. Let's get in here, dissect each of these games, get an absolute bag, and let's crack these folks. First game, Celtics versus the Timberwolves. Guys, I will say, by the way, yesterday, going four wins, seven losses, losing all those point fives. You know what's so crazy? I faded Vegas and I faded the money on almost every game yesterday, and I took three brutal beats. It's crazy how they just know how things just happen to point five flip their way, isn't it? I, I faded them. I faded the charts, the money, Vegas, every game, and I took three brutal beats. It never fails. You got every time I fade the money, I'm like, why did I do that? Anyways, first game, Celtics Timberwolves. Celtics getting six and a half points versus Timberwolves, who I think they are dead even to. I think these teams are identical, even in skill, similar play styles. I, I think these are two of the most even teams in the league. Um, it is surprising to me that the Timberwolves are getting six and a half points. That said, they are at home and they do have some major defensive advantages. Like the Celtics offense is not good and the Timberwolves defense is really good. That's where the major advantage is coming from. But the Celtics defense also is better than the Timberwolves offense, in my opinion. And the numbers show it as well and support it. This is one time I have to fade Vegas in the money today. I'm not trying to a lot since yesterday. It killed me, but. Celtics seven and a half went from minus 120 and then this morning it was at 115 and now it's shot up to like minus 106. I I cannot the charts moving the wrong way. Celtics are taking most of the money the charts moving up. This is close to a classic trap spot. It's not quite there. They didn't take that much money or that much of the money like as far as let me see how what percent of the bets went on the Celtics. Hold on a sec before I say this is not a classic trap spot. They're getting 69% of the money, charts moving up. It is it is like teetering that line of me calling it 100% Vegas trap spot and just bet the Timberwolves. It's it's like right on that line, 69%. I usually like to see 75-ish percent of the money before I call it an absolute trap spot. It's right there. I'm, I'm going to fade. I'm going with the Celtics plus seven and a half. Guys, be cautious. This is one you may want to fade. It's just my gut telling me that the Celtics don't lose to the Timberwolves by more than six and a half. So that's where I'm at. Next game, Raptors and the Hornets. I uh, didn't need much to think about here. I'm on the Raptors minus nine and a half. They have every advantage here. Mega defense advantage, mega offense advantage, and a three-point advantage is massive as well. Uh, I, I and, and they have a big three-point defense. One of my favorite metrics to fade is this three-point spot. And Raptors with number 10 versus 30th. I mean, the Hornets are the worst team in the league at giving up the three. That's why they lose by such big points all the time. You look at the chart, minus nine and a half for the Raptors. Plus 120 has dropped, 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 dropped. We're all the way down to plus 100. Great sign if you're back in the Raptors, which I am. Give me the Raptors, minus nine and a half. The Hornets are ass. They are ass. Next game, Bulls and the Pacers. Bulls are the first team I'm putting on the fucking ban list this season, idiots. I, You know, I knew, I knew it was too good to be true. I watched them. I fell in love with them. I said, wow, this is amazing. Surely they can't keep this up. Then they did it again. I said, wow, this is amazing. Surely they can't keep this up. Then they did it again. I said, wow, that's amazing. Surely they can't keep this up. And the bitches finally proved me wrong. They are ass. How many have they lost in a row now? Five, six, look like shit. Costing us all the money we won on them. They say, hey, the Lord giveth and he taketh. They, get, they took it all right back. Uh, I, Bulls are on my do not bet list. Give me the Pacers plus three and a half. These Bulls look like shit. They look, they look terrible. All terrible. Um, Pacers suck too. Game could go either way, but the chart is what got me there, guys. The Bulls are taking a little bit more of the money. Chart keeps moving against them. It went from 127, slowly gone up, gone up, gone up, which is, it's how you'd like to see it just slowly going up. You're up to minus 111 on the Bulls now on the three and a half. Uh, I, I can't do it. Money's moving against them, and I don't trust them, and I think that Vegas is starting to wake up and not trust them either. Give me the Pacers plus three and a half. That's where I'm at. Um, I will say what I worry about, though, is the three-point shooting, but the Pacers are one of the best three-point shooting defenses in the league, which is not good because that's all the Bulls do is throw up three. So I think the Pacers can win this game or at least keep it close. Next, Pistons in the heat. Pistons got one more chance, guys. These boys got one more chance. Give me one moment. Hello. With what? Yeah, hello. What'd you say? All right, hold on. 
Shit. All right, hold on. My bad, y'all. This is very unprofessional. Hey, bang. 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 Hold on. I got to hurry up and deal with this. Bang. Damn, y'all hear me? Get outside with your book bag. Ugh. I don't know how it's possible for me to not be heard. I'm the loudest person on earth and somehow no one in the house hears me. All right, <laughs> Pistons in the heat. Sorry, it was an emergency call, I had to answer. Uh, what was I saying? Oh yeah, Pistons got one more chance. One more chance and then I'm done with them. Um, I can't keep taking these rough loss with these guys, man. Uh, they just, they're like on a spiral downwards. I don't know what's going on. Give me the uh, give me the Pistons plus the three and a half. I'm just not ready to let them go yet. It's like an abusive relationship, you know. It's like ah, you hurt me ah, but I'm still holding on. That's a terrible example. I'm gonna get demonetized. That's awful. I shouldn't have said that. Uh, hey, look, fuck it. Give me the Pistons plus three and a half. That's where I'm at. You look at the chart though. Miami is getting most of the money. They were minus three and a half. Went plus 108 down to minus 108. It's a bad sign if you're backing these Pistons. The books in Vegas and money thinks they're losing. Bad sign. Next game, Nets versus the Bucks. <sighs> I hate both of these teams. Don't like either of them. Can't say much good about either of them. The Nets have consistently cashed big spreads for me. They did finally lose it last night. I think they were another one of the point fives. Um, God, they've been so good to me. I'm not ready to let them go yet either. Again. I'm still holding on. Uh, give me, <laughs> this is fucked. Give me plus 11 and a half for the Nets in this abusive relationship. Minus 150 to minus 108. This is, a, oh my God. Every play I like is fading Vegas and the money, bro. The uh, bad sign if you're back in the Nets. Terrible sign. Uh, the books in Vegas really like the bucks here. Um, I'm, <laughs> God, bro. Uh, I, I'm, I'm back in the money on a lot of plays. I just, the Celtics and the Nets, I think they're getting too many points, you know? Give me the Nets, plus 11 and a half. I, they've just been good to me. They've been covering big spreads. I got to back them. Next game, Pelicans and the Warriors. Uh, didn't need much to think about here. I took the Warriors, minus eight and a half. Pelicans can't shoot. They can't dribble. They can't do threes. They can't foul. They can't get fouls. They can't shoot free throws. They can't shoot layups. They can't defend. They can't stop the, uh, protect the paint. Uh, they don't have bench players. Uh, they're awful. They are the worst team I've ever laid eyes on. They're terrible. There's nothing good to say about them. Warriors, back to balling. Back to fucking balling. Uh, definitely, Warriors, minus eight and a half. And there's a damn good sign this morning around 8 a.m. Fucking plummeted from plus 104 down to minus 108 down to minus 111. That's a damn good sign if you're backing them Warriors. Um, I think the Warriors also have massive defensive advantages over the Pelicans, as you see. Um just can they score can they get hot they need to they're gonna need to score which they have been to cover this but give me the warriors minus eight and a half next game nuggets suns <laughs> i'm gonna be on the suns plus three and a half i think the nuggets are playing bad ball i think they're spiraling downwards i think the suns look better and better i think the suns can win this game outright uh happy to take them on the points the nuggets just aren't playing good in my opinion they're just not they're just not playing as good as you think they would be especially lately last few games have been bad um, they're still the best scoring offense, but they just don't, I'm sorry. In my opinion, they don't look good. And I think the Suns can hang with anybody. I do. Uh, also the money Denver has taken a large portion of the money guys. The nuggets are taking 63% of the money from minus 150 to minus 128 to minus 108 constantly going up, slowly going up all day, every day, all day till this morning. That's a bad sign if you're backing them nuggets. That means big money's coming on the Suns and pushing it down. Uh, yeah, give me the Suns plus the three and a half here in this one. Next game, Mavs and the Clippers. <sighs> Struggled here. Struggled here a lot. Tyron Lue is gambling. You know, yesterday when the Clippers were busting their ass, I said, yep, this is about to be a Tyron Lue classic. And what they do? They came out and they lost. I just knew it. I knew it. Tyron, James Harden after the game, popping champagne, high-fiving each other. I know what's going on. I know they're gambling. Um, God, I I think the Clippers win. Like I think the I think the Clippers cover here. I do. I think the Clippers win. 
They've been good to me lately. They like one in four has lost. I lost my bet last night. Prior to that, they won the last four. I can't. I'm not ready. I'm just not ready to let go. Uh, this is a this today is gonna be a very uh defining day for me because there's so many teams I'm clinging on to by a fucking thread. Like, please, please don't let me fucking go, bitch. And I might have to. So th- today is gonna be very defining. It's gonna be <laughs> We'll, we'll go over it after this. Give me the Clippers minus six and a half. They've been covering big spreads. They've been paying me. They've been good to me. I don't like Tyron Lue. I don't like James. I don't like Howie. I think they're all gambling. But I the Mavs are so terrible, and I think the Clippers got too much talent for them. I think they can win this game. I think they can cover the spread at home. I'm going to be on the Clippers minus six and a half. Today is a defining moment for a lot of abusive relationships because I'm going to be letting some go and moving on. I'm going to get a haircut and hit the gym if uh, shit don't work out today. Clippers. Hanging on by a thread. Um, Nets hanging on by a thread. Pistons hanging on by a thread. Bulls are already permanently banned. And the uh, Celtics hanging on by a thread. Five abusive relationships that might be coming to an end. This could be a good day. Or it could be very bad. Let's get out of here. Let's get a bag. And let's crack these folks. <laughs>